What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp practical modeling tutorial for you. Alright, so in today's video I thought we'd start a series talking about the planning and modeling of like a theoretical workshop or a garage that I might build in the open space out where I live. So um, this is something I've thought about for a while and I thought that I'd kind of like plan some different spaces out and just kind of get an idea of what this might look like. So I thought I'd walk you through the process, it'll probably be a multiple video series, but I'd love to hear from you any ideas that you have or what you like or don't like about the series. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I will preface this by saying I'm definitely not a designer of any sort, but um, I, it's kind of fun to be kind of creative and kind of think through what a process like this might look like. So I'm kind of thinking about this from the standpoint of if I was to build something, I would want it to have a couple different features, right? So one thing I'd really like to be able to do is be able to pull vehicles into the garage um, so that when it's uh, when it's snowy out or anything like that, they're not sitting out in the snow. Um, so that would be a really nice feature for me. Um, in addition, I would also like for it to have like a workshop space as well as, and it could be either a garage style workspace or an actual workshop, as well as a place where I could work out so I could move all my workout equipment into this space. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do um, with this space is I'm gonna figure out how much room I have to work with. And so I have a satellite image that I've pulled down using Placemaker's hexagon imagery. And so that gives me a little bit higher resolution um, stuff to work with. It's still not as high resolution as I'd like, but I don't think there's actual near map um, data available. So we're just gonna use what we've got. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna rough out a space and figure out what the footprint of this space could be. And so right now I have kind of an old broken down barn out here. I'm gonna go ahead and group this um, so that this isn't merging. I've got an old broken down barn down here as well as a couple sheds that would probably be moved but for right now I'm gonna look to maximize my space and that might be something that gets changed a little bit with budgets or whatever but for this exercise let's go ahead and model it as big as it could be. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this space and you can see I have a road running down to another outbuilding and so I'm gonna use that as kind of the boundary right here. And so just drawing a line and looking at the length, I can see that I probably have about 50 feet to work with, plus or minus. So we might be able to jam 60 in there if we really wanted to. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and call it 50 feet. So we're just going to draw a 50 foot line. And then I can kind of draw a line across and see that I have about 50 feet to work with over here as well. So it's a pretty good sized space that actually might be a little bit big, but let's go ahead and draw it big for right now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start just by drawing out the space. And so I can see how if I look at this overall um, that I can kind of see like all I'm trying to do right now is figure out my maximum space that I can work with, right? And so right now we're gonna assume that I can do kind of a 50 foot by 50 foot space in here. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about um, how I would block out the space. So uh, we can get into detail modeling in a future video, but for now I wanna talk a little bit more about space planning. And so what I wanna do is I just wanna hide my satellite imagery right here, and I'm just gonna create a view. I'm just gonna call it planning. And so all this is, is this is a space where I can get in here and I can just kind of plan some different things out. And we can turn that back on just by creating, let's add another view and we'll just call this all on. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to minimize the distraction so that I can focus on this space. But when I do create this all on view, I'm just gonna unhide my satellite view right here and we'll make this our all on. So now I can toggle back and forth or I should be able to toggle back and forth between those two things. And the reason this isn't working right now is because inside of the scene over here, this is not saving my hidden objects in my scene. So I just wanna check this box over here in my scenes toolbar so that now this scene is gonna save my hidden objects. And I need to do the same thing for my all on. So I just wanna check the box for hidden objects, unhide, last, and we'll update this. Now I can toggle back and forth between these two spaces. And so I'm gonna zoom this in just a bit right here. 
And so I'm gonna go ahead and reverse the faces on this and I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna make it a group because what I wanna do is I wanna kinda block out the space that I have in here. And I might add some dimensions in here just for my own memory. So I'm just gonna add some dimensions here and here, just like this. And so ideally, what I would like to see in this location is I'd like to see a couple different garage doors, right? So I wanna have a garage door here and I wanna have a garage door here. That way I can pull multiple vehicles in here if I need to. Again, if we have a weather event like the one we had a couple weeks ago um, where we got 26 inches of snow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roughly block this out. And all I'm gonna do in this situation is I'm just gonna draw a guide and I'm gonna say maybe like five feet off this wall. I wanna have a garage door and we're gonna say that this garage door is gonna be 12 feet wide. And then we'll have maybe another five foot. Then we'll have another 12 foot wide garage door right here. So I've got some kind of bays in here so I'm just gonna draw some rectangles that are gonna kind of represent my garage doors. So again, they're just kind of visual things for me. And I might even put some text in here. So I might just put the text, garage door 12 foot wide with the 3D text tool. I'm gonna replace that right here. I'll just take all of these and I'll put them in a group. So I'm just gonna make a group and I'll make a copy over here. And again, all I'm doing right now is I'm just roughing out how big this might be. I know it's kind of a big space, but that's okay um, for what we're doing right now. All right, and so let's also assume that I'm gonna have a man door over here. So we'll just uh, add another guide. So maybe like five feet. And then since we're doing kind of the ideal here, um, let's say that this is going to be a double door um, and maybe the doors are like three foot, six inch long each. So we'll call it seven feet wide. Um, again, just so that we can kind of see what the maximum would be. And then I would just do the same thing where I would just draw a block out and then some text right here. So we'll go ahead and make this a group right here. So now I kind of know where my doors would be. So now what I want to do is I want to figure out what I would put in the space so that I can start figuring out a layout, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build some pieces in here that I can kind of move around. And notice that I'm grouping everything so that I can move it quickly, right? So if I decide that I want to move the double door over here, that's just an object that I can move. And so now what I want to do is let's say that I wanted to be able to back a truck in right here. Well, we're gonna assume the truck is going to have a length of about 20 feet and a width of about eight feet. So we're assuming kind of maximums here, but we're gonna give this a length of 20 feet, a width of eight feet, like this. We'll just add some text and I'll add some text for width as well. So for length and width. So we'll do eight foot, zero inches wide by 20 foot long. I'm just gonna scale that up so that I can see it. And we're just gonna make that a group right here. So we'll put this in here and let's say like, so let's say that we ended up with two trucks because it would look something like this. All right, and so again, we wanna figure out kind of the maximum size that might be filled up with equipment or things that we wanna pull in here, right? So another thing that might get pulled in here at some point would be a tractor. And so the tractor with implements on it is probably gonna have an overall length of about 15 feet and a width of about five feet, right? So what we would do again is we would just kind of block this out and just do the same thing we did before where I'm gonna add the text um, showing what it is and the size. And so we could just take this object and we could just move that over here as well. So that's just gonna help us figure out our overall length. So say that we had like a really snowy event or something like that, what we might do is we might back trucks in like this. Then we might back in a piece of equipment in front of that, right? So that we can take that and go directly out um, in order to start pushing snow around. And so I'm just kind of generally moving these around just to get kind of an idea of what that space might look like. And so it's kind of taking shape in the sense that I can see, okay, maybe my workout area would go over here, you know, and then the other thing we could do, and this is the whole point of this exercise is we could say that this 
would be kind of our full depth vehicular area. And then we could say that maybe the workshop space could be built out over here. So notice how moving these things around and just getting an idea of the different spaces is really easy with the way that we've set this up. So let's say, for example, that we were to build a workshop space over here that was 25 feet long. So we could say this would be 25 feet, so half of the back, just to be simple. And then we could say that this would come out maybe like, I mean, we could even have it come out like 20 feet, right? And the assumption here is that this space would be kind of like built out because garage spaces can get kind of, um, garage spaces can get kind of gross, right? And so this would probably be something that would be framed out in the back that would keep all that dust and dirt and everything else out of here um, for whatever else we were doing. And so um, what we could do is we could just draw a shape right here I'm going to make this a group. Actually, I don't want to make it a group yet because I want to group everything together. But we're going to call this workshop. We're just going to scale that up. And for right now, we're saying this would be 25 feet wide by 20 feet long. And we'll just put that in a group as well. Well, let's say that we feel like this takes up too much of our space, right? Like, let's say instead of this being 20 feet long, we think maybe 15 feet by 20 feet is going to be okay. Well, what we could do is we could just move this away. We could just model it out again, right? So we could model out a 15 foot long by 20 foot wide space right here. I'll just copy paste the label. And we'll just place this right here. And so what that allows us to do is that allows us to kind of visualize these different parts and pieces really easily. So I could take this, move it out. I could take this and move it in real quick and just kind of look at this and see kind of the way everything lays out. So this is kind of where I would start with something like this is figuring out my layout, figuring out what that might look like, and then I can start building my building. And we could even take this whole thing if we wanted to, and we could just do an alternate, right? So um, what I could do instead is let's say I decided this was gonna be too big. Well, I could come over here and draw a 40 foot by 40 foot space as well, right? So I can make this a group, reverse this, but then you could copy all of these and see how they fit in here. So for example, let's say I had my garage doors. I could just use the move tool in copy mode to see what these would look like if I was to make them a little bit tighter, right? And remove some of that width. And because these are all built to scale, I can really kind of see what this would look like with a smaller footprint. And I could figure out like, okay, maybe I don't need this much space. Maybe I don't need to build something so big. You know, one thing that wouldn't fit in here if I wanted to be able to park two trucks would be this bigger workshop. So I could put this smaller workshop right here, but see how I can kind of like analyze the different layouts over here by doing this um, as kind of a blocking diagram. Then once I'm done, I can just make this a group and I could put that over here. I might group this as well. So I could take this one and align it with this point. I could hide this and I could take a look at how that overlays on my site as well. But then what I could do is I could set this where I have one option and then another option turned on. So I could flip back and forth between them. So for that, I would just create a new scene and I would just call this option two. And then if I was to unhide the last one and hide this smaller one, I could move this left. So I'm just gonna right click and move it left. We're gonna call this option one. So now I can toggle back and forth between the two and see how they lay out on my site. Because one thing that I might have to consider, and every site's a little bit different, right? But one thing you might have to consider is you might have to consider how much dirt work you're gonna have to do. So for example, the further 
this direction we move, the more of a hill this gets to be and this gets to be. So I might be able to fit this in a little bit better by going with the smaller option instead of the bigger option, which would require a lot more earthwork. So that's just kind of an overview of what the planning process might look like. So you can see how what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep things so that I can move them around and really kind of explore the different ideas and the way that the spaces kind of come together um, inside of my model. So no idea if this is going to be useful for anyone, but this is what this process might look like. Um, I'm probably going to play around with it a little bit more behind the scenes. And then the next video, we can talk a little bit more about how we might start modeling this out to see how this would look um, in your life location. So leave a comment below. Let me know if this is of any interest to you at all. If you're finding it helpful, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.